Welcome to podcast number seven. <laughs> this is Riku, as you already know. Uh, no. You. Hey, excuse me. So, welcome to the mess, which we call episode seven. Uh, you've got three of us again because you know this person doesn't exist and probably never will. Kyle just but genuinely doesn't give a shit about anything, but that's okay. We make up for it with furry friends. We're, we're not going to have a, a sign at this rate. She's really gone to town on it. Riku, stop. So okay, as long as we got this one, we'll be fine. Riku. You know, I, I, okay, before we go on anything else, like, this is probably the most she's attacked this side. <laughs> Riku, stop. Oh, there was an attitude there. Is the sign so badly offended, or is this... Where, where, I think it's just, uh, completely... Riku. Dry personalities are just getting... Riku. <laughs> oh, God, now there's two of them. Oh. So, we're going to start this episode with a cat fight. Uh, I'm going to put my bets on the big one. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh. Riku wins. <laughs> Very good. Well, so. Cats, Maddie. Mm. Cats. Mm. What's the most joyous thing about living a life full of cats? Cleaning up after them. <laughs> the most joyous thing about these cats is cleaning it's up. The, it's them. the fecal point of his. Okay, I'm gonna. The, fe- the fecal point. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Oh, That's Jesus the level of Christ. jokes he's gonna. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Beasley this week has been flat out with his um, other job. Because, you know, apparently he has a life other than this. Well, we're not gonna... If we suddenly lose audio, it's because the other cat has decided that the. The mixer is a good idea. <laughs> this is a fucking shit show. Uh, can I make goodness. A, can I make a suggestion? We restart. Let's restart. Yeah. That, that, the, <laughs> no, I'm good. Let's keep going. Okie dokie. Uh, We've already fucking started. Um, yeah. So if you can't hear us anymore, GG. Uh, no, it's still going. It's yeah. fine. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure it's still going. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go. Like, basically, go back and edit it, and then like his fucking voice will be like. <laughs> It wasn't loud before, it is now. Well, exactly. Well, we've we've hit our peak. Even if we had listeners or viewers, whatever the fuck you want to call them, they're deaf now. Cause the no, that's the point. All our, view, all our listeners are deaf. We're, we're re- revitalizing people's ears. <laughs> One podcast at a time. <laughs> okay. So, the real question I was getting onto. I mean, as much as I would have loved to talk about cats for an hour, I. I don't, don't know. Wish. I, don't, I don't want to talk about cats for an hour. <laughs> because oh. that makes perfect well, sense. Maddie's leaving. Okay. Bye, Maddie. It was, it was a good podcast. Uh, <laughs> it was episode seven. I was actually... We, we were actually talking about it just before we, we started when you were saying about the ukulele, which is coming out soon, which will be out by the time this comes out. On Xbox and PS4. And not on the Switch. R.I.P. Uh, what? It's not dead. It's just coming out afterwards. Yeah, R.I.P. It's dead. You're dead. Mm. Um, God, I wish I was. Nah, um, so, what I was saying is that you were saying that you clearly is free. Like, well, the, the reviews and everything. We were saying that all of them are saying that it's like a, tw- a game from twenty years ago, and it, it which it is. Oh no! The, the, entire... the bulk of the reviews are, it, is saying that it's relying heavily upon nostalgia and not adding anything new. But that was the whole point in that game. Yes. It's basically another Banjo Kazooie game. Yes. Which, like, I completely right agree. Right down with. to even the logo looking like a goddamn Banjo Kazooie. Like the, the, It's the the name and everything about it is it's it's like, hey, so... want Banjo Kazooie? Here's Banjo Kazooie without any copyright infringement. That's that's entirely what you clearly is. Which I'm still excited for because like I I'm keen for one of those games because. Nuts and bolts. I never actually played, but I heard wasn't worth playing. Matt enjoyed it. Was that right? Yes. Yes. Everybody who actually gave it a shot, I think, enjoyed it. Yeah. Ooh. As as <laughs> as as, well, as much grief as I I've given it in conversation, I haven't actually played it. So yeah. <laughs> You're one of those people, basically. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I'm basically, saying. ukulele rides off the nostalgia factor. That's that's the main reason people are gonna buy it. Yeah. It's because it's made by people made Magic Kazooie. What? For you guys, 
what is an element in a video game which dra like draws you in? Like what are, what about video games? Like what you kind know, of video that, game? That, 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 that's such a well, you're a master if, of broad questions, you are. Well, because um, uh, like it depends on the style of game. Like you can't say. Well, that's what he's asking you. What style? Of yeah, game? What style? No, of game? Style, style, Thank no, you, Matthew. Style of he's like you're a master of broad questions. No, I'm like, okay, I won't ask any questions. You, yes or no answers. You, <laughs> you episode off, ended in two and a half minutes. No, you start off by saying like, what what attracts you to a game? Like that's basically what you're saying. What style attracts? Yeah, exactly. What then, style of you game attracts you? That's what I'm. That's. It depends. Mm. Like, I, I like a game with a good story. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's my favorite type of game. Depends on what you want to play. Like, I, 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 I'm a big multiplayer person. I like playing multiplayer games. Yeah, but things like Zelda are some of my favorite games, and that's not multiplayer. Well, why do you like I'm, Zelda? Like, that's 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 why I'm. <sighs> they're just they they. Without all the little qualms about, you know, oh, this one's got a dead patch in it where you don't enjoy yourself and this one. Overall, they're usually well made. They're usually... Um, the, the, each game has something different about it, you know, with that, within keeping in the, in the franchise. Like, you know, even like, but I guess the, the, the really obvious one, which, you know, we've spoken about heaps, is Breath of the Wild, is completely different to any Zelda game we've played, but still yeah. very familiar. Um, and I like that, and that's open world, and I don't normally play a lot of open world games, so it really just depends on. You need you need good characters, you need you need a good story, um, but that's not always a be all and end all. Some things like let's say Mario Kart, for example. I it's love the story. You, you don't play you don't play Mario Kart for the story. story. Um, I I I I would actually agree to a point in the Breath of the Wild. I think that the Breath of the Wild, again, I, I can actually, I was going to say that it does kind of write off the fact that it's a Zelda game. It's like, hey, it's a Zelda game, people are going to buy it anyway. As long as it plays well, people are going to buy it. Like, oh, story-wise, it's, it's, it's story. got a, it's not a strong story, it's decent, like, for what it is, it's fine. I've never liked really any of the stories in any Zelda game, but yeah. I definitely think this is the weakest of them. Yeah. But it was also my favourite. Yeah, so, so yeah. there you go. And then considering, like, that's kind of something he loves story. Oriented games, that's yeah. well there. Like that's probably my favorite style of game. It's just straight up. Yeah, just straight like, up. I, I prefer li and yeah. Like a, a linear game isn't a bad game, in my opinion. I, so. I suppose the other side of things with uh, with Breath of the Wild, especially, is that that game for you to enjoy any element of the story, however vague it is, you need to have played other games because there's lots of just hidden. You know references and things that I mean, there's references but the actual story there's not really anything there like the story is less than half an hour of the 120 hours i've put into it of actual like yeah scenes and oh if, if someone i was gonna say i mean if someone just played the base of it and didn't do any of the side stuff you, you wouldn't get much out of it from a story perspective at all yeah you would like yeah. there's not really yeah there's not really a the, i think story. yeah there's, obviously there's that thing that they're they wanted the gameplay to be something which is going to like constantly entice you, and they want they want you to be constantly busy doing other things and not focusing on the story. Yeah, like, yeah the story I was wasn't, say, the, story I, I, wasn't the, wasn't the focus. Progression of that from that perspective in that game is uh, is sort of subsidiary to what you actually want to do, like wandering around and that. Like it, the story was never the driving point. Nintendo has never been a company that's told stories, yeah. so I don't go into any of their games expecting to have a good story. Yeah, no, it's, which I understand it's, that completely. It's not what they do. It's, it's really strange though because things which I like the thing with Breath of the Wild which I liked about it which I didn't like about many other games like that like you know how world games just drop in and then say like, okay go have fun sometimes it's like that can be too much like I don't like open worlds for that reason a lot of them I'm, I get turned off of them because it's like well I want to be able to like know where I'm going and know what I'm doing and like you know have some kind of focus to where to put things whereas like with Breath of the Wild it did that. It basically did that. It just said, okay, you can go to one of these places if you want to, whenever you want. And then it was just the fact that there were so many little things along the way, which were like, hey, this is actually really interesting and really fun. And yeah. I think a lot of games are now focusing on like side missions. Side missions are starting to become like that big thing where it's just like, oh, no, you don't need a main quest as long as your side missions are really fun. Which I think games like Skyrim and The Witcher and stuff like that have really fucking like, they got the ball rolling. The Witcher. the Witcher's just put that many side missions into a game that it's like it's become like this thing which you have to just pump a game full of side missions for it to be interesting now it's like no you can have a good, good main story and a few side missions and then just have an interesting world 
yeah, to go in. There's plenty to do in Zelda without doing the main mission or side quests. Like I'd come across side quests every now and then, but I never felt like I was just bogged down on side quests. Exactly, and it doesn't. And it doesn't. The thing with that is, it's like with your side quests, it's like there are things where obviously you can go from point A to point B to do something. Yeah. But then it was like, like you can just stumble across something and be like, oh, cool, I need this for a side quest. I'm doing something. I found a side quest, I have to see that side quest through, I finish it, and then I get back to what I was doing. It's like you pick up the side quest and you complete it yeah. on the way to doing everything else in the game. And you'll be like, oh, hey, I forgot to go back and talk to that guy. Like, yeah, but it turns yeah. in. And... Whereas, like, generic fantasy game number 17 would be like, here's your NPC. It's like, oh, no, this village has been attacked by orcs, etc. Go kill orcs and then go back and then be like, oh, cool, now you can go save my family from another band of... It's like, fuck off. <laughs> like, I don't care. It's like, this guy's like, hey... I have 10 apples? You're like, yeah, that's, that's fine. You're more than welcome to have 10 apples. And that's, that's the end of it. played it so long that I have everything I could possibly need to give you anyway. Exactly. That's, and that's the beauty of that, what I found in Zelda. So. Riku, 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 Oh, that was close. <laughs> Is she going to jump up on the laptop? Yeah. Oh, for the love of God. Um, so this, yeah. this, this podcast was doomed from the start. It's okay. That's what happens when you, when you live with cats. Um, but yeah, so I I can agree on story. Like with me, what what draws me to a game is definitely story. Story is a big one for me. Yeah, but I, I and, guess I guess story is not everything anyway. Because a lot of the games that I've enjoyed playing over the last couple of years, like for example, Minecraft. Minecraft has no story. It's just yeah. go do something. But the, that's the the thing with me is it's like you're kind of building v- your video games. Yeah. I think video games have become this thing where it's like I mean like they not all of them obviously, but they've become this thing where it's like people are just playing them and have fun anymore and it's like i think i think a lot of them are missing that like because you know like i enjoy a story because it's fun to play through a story and it's fun to like play through an interesting environment whereas like, i was talking to somebody today um and they said they're like ah oh, i don't really play games for fun i just play them to like play them and it's like well what's what's the point in playing a video game if you're not gonna be playing it like you know to enjoy yourself if you're looking for the food for the cat it's in the door how to feed animals ah uh, yep so just check your doors at home that's that's where you keep your, your your food for your cats where else would you fucking keep it in the door that's all it says just in the door well i don't i, I don't i don't oh, okay all right if i love how like you're you gonna be, assume you're gonna be... that everyone's gonna have context okay, okay firstly yeah but who's gonna go oh my god you're picking on someone who's very sleep deprived at the moment um God, now I'm hitting the microphone. Where, what other door would you keep cat food in? It's not, it's not, it's not a game show. It's behind <laughs> door number one. Like, no, no, it's what's inside door number one. It's not behind the door at all, Beasley. I guess what? The answer's cat food, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so, Matt opened the fridge. You open the fridge, right? You know, those, those receptacles for cooling products, make sure they don't go, you know, off. And he opened the fridge, and I could see him investigating the contents of said fridge. And in that fridge, there is many things. And one of those things is the food for Riku and Yuna. And Matt, around this time every day, feeds the cat. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I'm yes. clarifying, because apparently literally. I'm not literal enough. <laughs> and then, once he goes to the fridge and opens the door, you know how a door opens to a fridge? Yeah, you with me? Yeah, following? Yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah, yeah, understand. Yeah, you understand yeah, what a fridge yeah, is? Yeah, good, yeah. right? We're good. Does everyone out there understand? I, well, you're never going to tell me anyway, because, you, you know. Um, so, you open, and in the door, there's a door. The fridge has a door. Okay, hence okay. what you're opening, okay? Mm-hmm, yep, yep. Mm-hmm, uh, now, yeah. you don't leave the door open too long, because all the cool air will come out, and then you blow your fridge up, and all these... I think, think your narration's gone from third person to first person to, like, second person. Whatever. Like, in, like, four <laughs> times. You've gone <laughs> from, like, and then, and then, and then, then Matthew then open, opens open the, the door, fridge door. Right, and so, so Matt opens the door. Matt opens the door, and then I, I could see him looking. So I thought, okay, Matt, if you're looking for the cat food, it's in the door. Where else would you keep the cat food? I, I understand. Like... <laughs> Okay, I mean, some people might actually keep the cat food not in the door of the fridge, like... Okay, let me clarify even <laughs> further there, alright? This is the kind of cat food, it's not dry cat food, it's once it's it's cat food in a tin, and once yeah. you open the tin, you can't just put it back in the cupboard. A, because once it starts to rot, then you have an odour. Now, to get rid of an odour, you need an air freshener. Now, if you need an air freshener, we don't have any, so then you have to go to the supermarket. Now, when you go to the supermarket, you get in your vehicle. When you get in the vehicle... You have to start the car. Now, do you know how to start a car? I right, do. Well, let's start a car. Okay. 
I'm passing time until Matt comes back because this is just with the blue rain and, and, and the people already think I'm crazy. Oh, look, he's back. <laughs> No, now he's putting the cat food. He's got the cat food. He's gonna put the cat food in the door. Now he put it in the door of the refrigerator. We were speaking to all the people out in whatever that place is. The internet. That's the way. Now, do you know? Do you understand the internet? Are you good with my literal descriptions of things now? I am. Glad per- to see that he's made no progress while I was gone. Oh yeah. Uh, because he wanted I, I, to know what door you were hiding I made, the cat I made, food I made, behind. I made a quick, a quick, <laughs> quick little jab of it easily, and then uh, he pretty much he, like you know. He, I'm I, slowly go. Descend, I slowly descended into madness, alright? So I was giving a commentary on how you open the fridge to find the cat food. I just said, because everyone else, like, you know, everyone who, what whoever other we were watching, door would you You just the looked cat over there and you behind. said, it's in the door. There was no context except for Matt getting up and walking over there and you're like, it's in the door. And they're like, well, what's in the door? People oh, well, are going to be time, asking. Next time you feed the cat, Matt, I'll get the camera and I'll follow you to the fridge so they understand that the cat food's kept in the door at the moment because of all the other stuff in there, right? <laughs> anyway, where were we? I can care. I don't know. Cat food and... Beasley killed my brain games. with his, his, his general knowledge fucking rant. <sighs> it got to side quests and then like I've just I've lost everything thank well, you Matt, well, Matt went, well Matt went on a side quest alright Matt went on his little side quest to feed the cat and now the sign's falling off <laughs> it's falling apart just like us right now <laughs> <laughs> but yes video games uh, <laughs> I personally yeah I enjoy story I enjoy linear yeah, linear game isn't a bad game in my opinion I like I like linear games I also like open world games. Depends in what context, because some linear games is like, well, this is boring as shit. What 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 constitutes a bad game? There you go. What constitutes a bad game? What what makes a game bad for you? Well, I can't say like right. The first thing people usually jump to is, oh, it looks graphically bad. But to me, that's not an issue if it's a good game. Like in this, no. especially with a lot of the indie games that come out now, that like a lot of it's sixteen bit and that. Like, who, who cares if it's a good game? It's a good game. Yeah, but I'm I'm also at that point where it's become like. People are like going, trying too hard, and it's like, hey, let's make this niche of like making a shitty looking game just so that I'll sell it. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Makes sense. And it's it's understandable from that like point of view. Like, you know, if you want to make a few few dollars, you can. Um, I've completely been thrown off because, you know. I don't know. More often than not, it's just that I don't have have the time to put into a game. Yeah. So a game could be good, and it's like, just. A lot of people assume if I don't want to play it, I mustn't like it. I was like, well, man, I just don't have time. Yeah, exactly. I like a lot of story games because they're just short and to the point and I can play it in an afternoon. And you know there's going to be an end where it's like, okay, it's done, it's dusted, it's finished. If I want to play more of it, I can go back and I can go through and get collectibles and shit like that. Which, like, yeah, I completely agree with. And, like, that's why, like, if everyone's like, oh, the campaign was only three hours long. I'm like, three hour long campaign? Fuck yeah. I could fit that in, like, a day. (laughs) Like, you know? I, I... Yeah, even though I still haven't finished it. <laughs> He's the one example, yeah. you piece of shit. <laughs> See, okay, so in context, I like Journey. I really do. Uh, it's it's a very fun game and it's, it's a beautiful game. But I just, I tried playing through it in one playthrough and I just chose a bad night when I was playing through it really slowly. So I haven't finished it yet, but I do enjoy it. One day. One day, I'll finish Journey. And then that day we will, the, the Lord will rain upon us. He'll wait for the PS5 version. <laughs> PS. <laughs> wait until it comes to VR. <laughs> I had my VR journey. <laughs> That'd be cool, actually. That would actually be very cool. All right. Well, VR. That's something which, since, I don't know, since the Switch has come out, I feel like VR hasn't had the spotlight on it quite as much. Is. No, I'd, I'd say even before the Switch came out, the spotlight sort of dwindled a bit on the VR for a yeah. while there. But what are uh, what are what are people's thoughts on the on the, on the VR? Like, what what do you think is going to come to the future of VR? A lot of people are talking about it again when Resident Evil came yeah. out. Yeah, and which I is a brilliant game. Like, you can watch our videos. I think there are a few games coming out soon that look pretty cool on there. Yeah, I haven't actually really looked into the library of VR, upcoming VR games. Um, Star Blood Arena is coming out soon. That looks pretty cool. And then there's like a first person shooter coming out soon that has like co-op. I can't remember what it's called. I'll find out. I'm looking up upcoming PlayStation VR games. Good, good, good. So look. 
Ooh, helping comes out. out a couple of months, I think. Don't know why Resident Evil 7's on here because it's already out. Uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew is also out. Dino Frontier VR. I don't know if anyone knows about that one. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport, obviously. That one's That's showing good. out eventually. That's Tekken 7. I didn't know that it'd be our sport. I didn't. How would a Tekken game have VR? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it just does like first person. Like um, Street Fighter did on the 3DS. God, that would do That would kill me. Like, I don't know. I, I'm just imagining somebody standing in the living room just punching the shit out of their TV. Like... <laughs> That worries me a little I bit. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't get my head around that one. There, there's, I think weird. there's some VR games which they probably oh, should stay with. Uh, Farpoint. Farpoint. There you go for. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That comes with the gun thing. Yes, the new VR oh, gun aim awesome. controller. I believe it's good. That'll be fun. Uh, that'll probably be the next time I play my VR. Actually, something we the uh, same we're talking about games coming out and whatever else, we're, we're really not that far out from E3. Mm. That's in what, what do you think E3 is going to bring? Well... All right, well let's yeah, all right, let's go down the let's go down the E three prediction route then because that's something we can talk about. Um, from a Nintendo standpoint, they've they've got to showcase a whole heap of Switch content, and it needs to be third party stuff. They they need to show some of their stuff as well, but it needs to be the third party support level stuff mm-hmm. because that's probably the biggest fear with everyone when it comes to a Nintendo and a console. Well, both EA and Ubisoft have their own press conferences, and I think they should. They'll probably end up talking about a lot of multiplayer uh, games. I think if they yeah, if they if they're smart about it, they will just announce like a heap of like you know they'll be like oh this is coming to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. The, exactly. the, the other thing is they really whether it gets to that point um, or even beforehand, but if it's going to be as late as that, that has to be the absolute latest they start their online service properly. Yeah, I don't because it's 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 something that should have been there at launch. I think they'll talk about it, but I think the actual like paid for online service will launch with Splatoon. I don't know if they've said that or not. I'm not mm, sure, but I feel like Splatoon yeah. will be the game. That I launches. think that was that they yeah, I don't know. I think I was reading something about it. And they said it's a, said something about later this coming later this year and Splatoon. Yeah, yeah. and then that's around year, the same so. time that Splatoon was coming out. I think that's that was just putting two and two together there. So yeah. I feel like because E3, I think they usually have like their big reveals and stuff like that for like all the companies. What do you, what do you think's gonna be like around the big reveal kind of thing? Like because obviously last year, um, like Scorpio was the big one for Xbox. Well, this year I think though, Scorpio will have like they'll touch base on it a lot more. Apparently, the specs were released recently. Yeah, Is that correct. But yeah, some official announcement with. Oh, for the love of God, what's that website that does like, um, frame rate? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, this is the official one that brought it up. Yes. Uh, Digital Foundry. Digital Foundry. Hey. Yeah, it was an official launch with Digital Foundry. I don't. It seems like on timing for it though. I'm wondering if maybe stuff was starting to leak anyway, and they thought let's just get the specs out there officially but yeah it seems weird to announce the specs of a console without seeing the console or knowing any games yeah or anything exactly. like that just what? yeah all right so if you're gonna go uh, let, let, what do you think all right start start well, we're saying we're talking about xbox start with xbox is there anything you ex, you have heard little rumors what you think will come or be announced they know A3? that games are what they need yeah. to make this console Is there any game so. you're thinking completely left field they might just go right we've start we're developing I think they've given Rager. up Okay Press the pause button again that's what you do We're back <laughs> After the uh, shit show of Riku. Yeah, I will say, with all, with all the things going on We didn't podcast, think I'm anything sorry, I'm at all. <laughs> we haven't even sunk it at the start, so that's going to be a fucking nightmare to edit. <laughs> we better sink it now. Oh, we'll oh yeah, we can do Okay. All right. Enjoy this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right. Now I can sink it. Wherever. Fucking hell. <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh, all right. Um, no, I'm just saying, is there anything that... Okay, we're back on track now. Um, th- anything that you think that they're going to just announce, like, totally left field? Like, I've got a really good one for Nintendo that I think, but I was yes. saying well, we're on X- Xbox. Like I said, Xbox, I think they're not going to go Halo, because Halo 5, I wouldn't say it was a flop, but it wasn't. I mean, it's, they've got to announce something that 
benefits yeah. having the Scorpio. I think the, the, yeah, well, what, what is there? You can't have a game for Scorpio that doesn't run on it on the normal Xbox ones. Yeah. No. So, so, so what is the point? And the Scorpio will enhance every normal Xbox One game anyway. Yeah. Like just make it at least run. So, better, so. What, what is the what, what for someone who's not an, an Xbox player? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get my head around it. I've never understood the and so, and to some degree. Uh, yes, it does some some things, but the Pro was the same thing. The PS4 I, I Pro. Think it's, I, for all the people whinging about and saying how the Scorpio is going to be better than the Pro, I think in the end it's going to be exactly the same thing. Sure, yeah. it's more powerful than the PS4 Pro, but it'll get treated exactly the same way. Yeah. Cause so what are we gaining like, from it? Nothing really. Nothing groundbreaking. Put it that way. Yeah. Okay. I think just hardcore Xbox gamers will we'll get the console up. and. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm eventually going to pick up a PS4 Pro, but I've not rushed out and bought one because I just don't see what benefit I'll get from it. Yeah. No. That's um, understandable. Like, yeah, I think it's about the same. Yeah. It's a bigger jump, but it's not a normal jump where games are suddenly coming out for this new console and not the old one. So. I, th- I think at this point, like, I can't see much which like Xbox have which is going to like really draw people in. Like so. they've used up all like they've used up all their big cards. Like Rare Replay was like one of the biggest cards they could have played, and yeah, that's, that's been cool. that's been done and dusted. Like it's still selling well, from what I can tell. Um, but like they've already that that was like the big guns. That was like, hey, you guys want to win nostalgia? Here's here's your big pack. Well, I think for Xbox fans, the new Gears of War was the big thing, <laughs> and that's already out. So. So just just a side thing. Um, our friend Campy's just texted me because he tried ringing, and it was funny. We were talking about um, Sean and my playthrough through Resident Evil. He's basically gone to us. Stop screaming on these things. You're scaring the shit out of me. But I am enjoying the videos. <laughs> so there's an endorsement. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, shameless plug there. Uh, uh, what were you saying, sorry, buddy? Sorry. Um, I don't remember. One day yeah, we'll get like, him on the podcast. I don't know. Uh, the games come out on PC now, so if you have yeah. a really good PC, you don't need yeah, to worry that, that, about it. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like if you buy anything on Windows, Windows 10, um, yeah, on Xbox One, is it? You get it on Windows yeah. 10 as well? Most of them are, yeah, that, that, digitally, it's cross. You, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was the big one where I was like, okay, that's... Do you think that Microsoft's in a very weird position with their like video game? At this point, like, I feel like they've been just, backed into a corner. Like, you make money off the games, not the console. So yeah. if this is doing well for them, then that's cool. Um, uh, what about Sony? Sony, like Sony's got Sony. Sony's got a tradition of having awesome. Well, they've, the system. thing is, they've they, the one the other one where I was saying about Rare Replay. Obviously, they've got Crash. What was it? What's it called? Yeah, the but isn't, isn't that insane is, trilogy? Insane isn't, trilogy. Isn't that coming up before E3? That's just or before E3. E3 or something? The the biggest card they could play on on that, like on a retro revampy thing, is like the closest thing they've got at this point is Spyro, which is probably isn't going to happen because Skylanders still exists. Well, they also announced the Jack and Daxter HD yeah. collection, which has not been given a date yet. Yeah, which who knows? Like that could imagine if that meant a new Jack and Daxter game, that could be the biggest card they could pull out of their back pocket. Yeah. I doubt it, but I mean, I like that. It's not just the trilogy, it's also Jack X. Yeah, Jack because X. Because if it wasn't for Jack X, it's like, I already bought your Jack and Dexter HD trilogy twice oh, now. Exactly, on, on your PS3 and Vita. Exactly. Like, so at least this is something like, oh, cool, I'd like to play Jack X again. It's been a long time. Which uh, I'm just going to reiterate the Vita isn't dead. I have had two people buy, uh, buy Vitas recently and been talking. <laughs> I've been talking Vita to people. Uh, it's not a dead format, Vita Master S. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Jack and Dexter, the, like having Jack X. I think, and because that's got the multiplayer element, obviously as well. That if they've got online play with that, that'll that'll bring a few people in. I think so. I was disappointed this morning. Like I thought about, oh, that doesn't include the um, what's it called, Jack and Daxter and the Lost Frontier or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the that, fourth one. Because there's, there's the Lost Frontier and there's also there's also just Daxter on the well, PSP. Yeah, as well. Daxter. But Daxter, if this is their PS2. I don't know if they're doing it as like a standalone thing or if this is part of their PS2 classics line. Yeah. And if that's the case, then it makes sense why Daxter's not there, but it yeah. doesn't make sense why. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Daxter is awesome, so I wish Daxter would come to PS4. Yeah. I mean, that game is like one of my favourite Jack and Daxter games. See, that's another one, like H2 remakes. Is it, it, do you think, personally, I'm going to kind of like go off, the thing, do you think it's too late, like too early to start doing trilogies of PS3 games on the PS4? Because like... They've got the processing power and they've got the size, 
the thing with yeah the PS3 stuff is like you know they've got really good Ration Clank games on the PS3 like they've got like Quest for Booty Off One Q Force Nexus pretty much like they got that that cracking time okay, the, the best the one, best one. <laughs> um, I think that though and that would be awesome but they're putting so much effort into their PlayStation Now stuff that it would yeah. kind of be you would kind of make competing it competing with yourself to, yeah exactly to do that but uh, it would be know. cool I think there are some things more than others that I thought would have been smart like doing infamous one two and festival of blood when yeah second sun and first light came out that's another one like well it's been enough time since second sun came out because when did the ps4 drop? it was 2014 yeah something like that yeah and like since that's dropped like second sun's almost become like not irrelevant but it's become because it was a launch title they're probably due for a new infamous game that could be something they could drop they could drop a new one in the coal series obviously like you know if I play the ending of 2 I'm not going to spoil anything but like you know the ending of 2 does leave you a little bit like what happens yeah I, d- I doubt they're working on another infamous game yeah. I think that'll make something new yeah either that or like obviously Sly Cooper movies is that still happening like I there's there's so little information on the Sly Cooper movie at this point that yeah I think it's been cancelled yeah I think like Ratchet and Clank didn't do well enough for them I think they're just going to silent. They're just not going to mention it again. I assume. yeah, they'll, they'll just let it die. I think it's not disappointing because the trailer looked pretty cool. Well, the teaser, the little, the little teaser, like that did get me excited. That was also just before, like that came, that dropped about a couple months after the Rash and Clank trailer dropped. Like the first one that dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah around the same and time. like I enjoyed the Rash and Clank trailer, and I enjoyed the Rash and Clank movie personally. Like I don't see any negative with um, start of twenty fourteen. So, my my prediction with Nintendo, a bit left field, but okay. There's been this trend over the last few years of HD re-releases of certain games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I predict some sort of announcement regarding a HD re-release of Skyward Sword. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to say that because if anything let that game down on a very major level is that it was a it was a very nice art style but because of the limitations of the Wii it was a bit fuzzy like Matt and, I, Matt and I were talking about this other, the other day like or it was like the artwork that came out for it looked absolutely stunning like it was beautiful artwork and then actually playing the game it's like oh god like okay. it goes grainy and horrible and everything um, I don't think because when you look at it, it the, the way um, the way you we had Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, they were both GameCube titles. So yeah, it's not uh, it's not un- you know the the way there's been a console in between. So yeah, no, that's um, they might do. I think it would be cool, and I don't even really like Skyward Sword, but I think it'd be cool to see it in HD. Yeah, um, um, which could also lead to why we've got that stuff in Breath of the Wild. Maybe they're planning on doing that and that's why there's going to be Amiibos yeah that would make sense that would all make sense um, so because I'd love some Skyward Sword Amiibos I yeah. mean I, I'm sick of buying Amiibos but <laughs> Zelda ones do Zelda it. ones are my exception at this point you know. yeah, Nintendo do love doing HD remasters of Zelda games um, do, do we feel like so you know because obviously they bring back like the, the NES, NES classics and SNES classics and stuff with your subscriptions yeah. do you feel like another like I mean it's not a big release but another like NES remixes will come out because like they've started to do that I feel like maybe a SNES remix is probably going to come out in the near future um, it'll be like it'll be another money grab thing I, th- I think so but I don't think it'll be anytime soon because they're still manufacturing the NES ones if you're talking about like the NES mini yeah but, yeah. 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 Um, but I, th- I think so I definitely think so especially SNES no, uh, I, I would have thought so until like seeing how well the Switch is doing at the moment. Yeah. I think they've halted production so that these things aren't flooded everywhere. And then, well, we already know that team is working on the NES ports for the Switch. Yeah. Yes. And I reckon they've probably just gone, let's be done with that. We need people a reason to buy the Switch and buy those games on the Switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, which, which yeah, I, I agree. And then, yeah. So yeah. if they're going to keep working on 
Like, if all those NES games are done and ready to be put on the Switch, and then they just keep working on a heap of others. Yeah. Like, it's just night and day seeing the NES run Mario and then the NES Mini run Mario. Like, they're not even comparable. Yeah, no, that, mean, that, that's, so, that's so true as well. Like, they did I'd such like, a good job I'd those. like to yeah. say, because obviously they've announced a Mario game. They've announced, or we've got a Zelda game. They've And, now, and we're getting Splatoon. Yeah. So some of the, there are other IPs that people will be expecting. We are expecting some sort of Pokemon game. Yeah. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if there's some sort of coverage on that at round E3. Because um, yeah. I don't know. It's Has Nintendo said they're having a conference this year? Or are they doing another, like, direct? Or They've not said. Yeah, All I... we know is that they're on the show floor. And they've, they've got the biggest area for the show floor, haven't they? Yeah, and Sony is very close behind them. Mm-hmm. And the weird thing is that Xbox is, is very small compared to previous years. Yeah. So. Um, so you know, so Pokemon's Pokemon's a lock. We just don't know the level of it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'd like to see a different Pokemon game, as in like a stadium style game. I, I, I wouldn't be disappointed if it was a another version of Sun and Moon, but it's kind of like mm. either way, I'd be happy with either I'm playing a Sun and Moon style game on my Switch, and that would be cool, mm. or. I am playing the copy of Sun and Moon on my 3DS, which I don't really like turning my 3DS on because that console kind of sucks compared to the Switch. But if I was turning that back on to like wirelessly connect it to the Switch to do, use like your Pokemon yeah, in a multiplayer battle in a stadium cool. style thing, then that would be very I would cool. be just as happy with that. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree. Um, either way, it'd give me a reason to play Sun and Moon again because I've not finished that game. We, I, yeah. we won't get a Star Fox game. And that's um, I can I just think I'm not like, open just for a Star Fox in the I, next five years. I like, think the only way we would get a Star Fox game is if they go back and kind of mess around with Star Fox Zero and get that to work on the. Switch. I was going to say either that or because like Star Fox sixty four obviously had that remake for the, the DS. That's true. That would that, be that'll awesome be, that'll with be like the big one that they do online components and stuff. That would be really cool. Adding I could online. see them doing that if they really want to push their online stuff. I could see them doing maybe even online online only Star Fox. Mm, yeah. Because Splatoon's pretty much online only and that's doing well for them. Yeah. Um, like, there, there's no the thing is I don't they're not dipping their toes far enough in the water with just online only games. They're like obviously that's what Nintendo's known for. They're known for like happy like you know family friend like co-op, couch co-op gameplay. Yeah. But if they're going to make us pay for it, there's got to be more than just... Exactly. There's got to be more than just like, like, you know, not everyone has friends. Let's be honest. Like, it sounds terrible, but like... I wonder if that, like, Activision will announce Call of Duty for the, the Switch this year. That is a, that is another I one. Think, I think that's Nintendo's key, even if they're not doing the announcing for games, is that if the Switch can be featured in a lot of the other conferences and saying it's coming to Nintendo Switch and, you know, the other consoles, etc. Especially if, for their online stuff. Um, like, if, th- but if AAA third-party stuff falls through, then... And Crown Lion's not going to be really great on the Switch. No, yeah. If they have that there, then yeah, they can rely on mm. yeah, exactly. parties to do all that. that and there will good. be more people. I've got a feeling we might it. get some sort of Pikmin game. Uh, yeah. Pik- well, I, Pikmin 4 was already announced for the Wii U. Not officially, but Miyamoto said it's pretty close to being yeah. done. Yeah. But not worth putting on the Wii U. So yeah. Um, the, it'll be like, and because of they've got so many like good motion controls and like the rumble, HD rumbles and everything, they could like. No, the specifically, I was actually thinking about this. I think it was yesterday. I was talking to somebody about a Pikmin game on yeah on the Switch, and the thing is like because they've got the HD rumble, like like realistically, like think think about it for the minute in the sense of like you know how they've got the, the ice cubes, like you were saying about the ice cubes, like yeah. you'd be like, oh, I count how many Pikmin are in the control, like just things like that. <laughs> Nintendo like, Land Pik- Two, Nintendo, yeah, basically <laughs> Nintendo Land Two, like you can you can check the control to get all the Pikmin out, and like that that's how you call them back. Like things like that, these little features, these little niche features of the Switch need to bring in. Like, yeah, they yeah. need they need to be utilized. I was just thinking. I reckon they were pretty close to being done with Pikmin Four, mm. and they probably decided to put it on hold until the Switch was closer. And then maybe they made that little side-scrolling Pikmin game on the 3DS. Yeah, in yeah. In the yeah. meantime, but then I was thinking, we haven't heard about that game in forever. Maybe yeah. that's coming to the mm, Switch. Maybe. Yeah, like, because. I don't even think that had an official title yeah. when it was announced for 3DS. No. I not said a word. Yeah, they haven't said anything about and it. I don't, I'm not going to play it on 3DS. <laughs> no. so. That's that's fair. And I feel like a lot of people which have yeah, bought the Switch are like think... their... It would be a good downloadable game. I, I don't even think that Pikmin yeah. side-scrolling yeah, game Yeah, but do you, do you think... Do, you know how you keep... Uh, and, and you've got a valid, valid point. Like, playing the Switch now really does show the limitations of the 3DS. 
I find it weird that they're not just slowly phasing the 3ds out to some degree. I, I guess it. I guess it's the price point is probably the biggest thing. Is the 3ds is much more affordable. I think they'll be forced to phase the 3ds out. But I don't. Yeah, I was going to say showing them that they don't want to play games on there. Like if you yeah. just vote with your wallet and don't buy these games they're putting out, because that's what I hear everybody say. Yeah. It's like the new Fire Emblem's coming out. I don't want to play it on my 3ds. Yeah. I'm not talking me because yeah. I don't want to play it at all. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, be- the best ex- the best example was when me and you were at we work the other day. And we noticed there was the Mario. What was it? Super Sports. Oh, that was amazing. Amazing. That, that was like that's like the worst thing that they could have possibly done. They're like, hey, here's this fucking compilation of all the best Mario sports games, and the Switch has just come out. Put in your 3DS. It's yeah, like that that game's been like that's the thing that's kind of ticking me over. Like oh, I want to play it so much. Maybe I'll get on the 3DS, and I keep not doing it just because like there. there's just that. Ho- and the thing is, they've, they've almost I wouldn't say false hope because like at this point we don't know. Like it could come out on the Switch. But at this point, they've got it as like, hey, here's your game. Like, you know, you might come to the Switch. And like, like a whole line of Switch. Amiibo cards for it. And like, just like, for it's one just, game? Yeah, that's, it's just like... Well, obviously, the thing with that, obviously, is because like, it's all Mario-oriented like characters and all stuff like that. Yeah. And Mario games, aren't, they're not going to stop making Mario games. As long as Mar- Mario is that fucking dead horse they can keep kicking, <laughs> then like, they're going to keep making Mario games. Like, there's, there's no doubt about that. But I do understand where you're coming from. Like... They to need a to specifically sports line of cards. They're like baseball cards. Yeah, I know. Like it's all, and it is really cool that they've done it. But it's like they just they need to. I think they need to care more yeah. about like the switch. Like yeah, I don't know. Overall, well, I mean, obviously the the, the bigger wider thing that that kind of I think that that halted a lot of things Nintendo wise because it's like their announcements couldn't be quite as big. And that sounds really terrible saying it in hindsight, but like he was a big drawing point for those like the directs and stuff yeah. like that and because they had to stop doing directs because of that reason it's kind of like it's definitely slowed down the process heaps yeah well it may be something where we just don't know that maybe they've just killed off doing directs and they're yeah. just kind of moving into a slightly different style of announcing things which like, I, I, I guess i guess the directs were a very uh, a water thing mm. it's hard to like the last couple they did do after his passing has just been really i don't know they're just not working um, they're all right. Like, I'm not saying they're crap, but they're just not. I don't know. They're not in the same spirit, and I think it's because they they don't want to duplicate what Iwata was doing. But if they don't, it's they're not really a direct. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like it's, it's sort if of they're kind of moving. If they're slightly changing their target demographic with the Switch, yeah. then I don't think the Nintendo Directs fit that demographic no. exactly. No, I so I think they're just kind of slightly just shifting direction a little bit. I no, t- I, I understand that. I, it, yeah. I tell you, there's, there's one game, it's a pipe dream for me. I'd love for that to be on there. Mm. Is, is a sequel to Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I, that, actually, I, I actually really loved that game. I that enjoyed so that, that game. Like, cause it, was, it was a cheap, it was 40 bucks, 50 bucks when it came out. This it was, was cheap. Well, I was going to say it was, it was cheap, cheaper compar- than the was like, I think it was. I think it was fifty nine ninety five. Kirby was also launched at fifty nine ninety five. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so that that was like it was a cheaper game, and it was like you you'll promise these bite sized levels of a, like, and it was Mario format, but then it's like, hey, we're going to make it different to a Mario game. Obviously, it's part of the Mario RP, but we got to make it its own kind of thing. And the fact that he couldn't jump, it was just like you know, it just adds this extra puzzly element to it. Might not have been everyone's cup of tea, but it was like, hey, here's your enjoyable bite-sized Mario game, which like you can just pick up, play a couple of levels, and then leave within like 20 minutes. Well, it's one of those games that could have also just been a smaller experience at a cheaper price and just yeah. digitally. But I don't think the audience was there with the Wii U to be able to do a lot of yeah first party Nintendo exclusive downloadable no. only games like no. even New Super Luigi U was a downloadable game that yeah. they were like we're going to put this on a disc because you know that people want it on a disc see now you've set me off Luigi's Mansion on Switch would be so good <laughs> yeah. there's or some, some see, version of that, the, oh. there's, there's Dark all these Moon things was that, awesome Dark Moon was amazing well, I love the first game but the Dark way, way they so vastly improved way, that game better, like it was yeah. so good like I oh yeah I, I didn't find faults with the original Luigi's Mansion until I got a sequel which exactly. was 10 did times develop, better did they develop that with somebody else yeah I think so I can't remember who but I think that that's the that exciting was one thing. Of the earlier, like we're getting these people to help us make it kind of games back then, because they yeah. just didn't have enough teams to. The best thing this. that I feel like Nintendo does when it comes to their like directs, where it's like, because everyone always has these Nintendo IPs that they want, and then they're like, hey, here's give you, let's give you something you didn't want, but 
you knew you wanted the entire time without like, realising it. Treasure Tracker was one of those. Nobody thought that was going to be a thing, and then it just randomly appeared. Yeah, exactly. And that like, was all. That was all from like. Even, a even look at the, look, like look at their other their newer IPs they have brought out recently. Like the best one I've never played it, but Bravely Default and Bravely Second. They're like some of the biggest IPs that like that. Those games are selling ridiculously well. They're yeah, like the best IP they introduced in the last three four years is Splatoon. Yeah, oh, 100%. That, that's, that, that, like, that, they they not, nailed that. And that's a great. Everywhere. That's a great example. It's just I think, and it will get it will get wide wider spread coverage on every level because it can be used for esports. It can be you know it's a, it's something that everybody's interested. In. It's, it combines the I don't want to say childish, but, but the childlike mentality of Nintendo games with yeah. something that's highly competitive. Yeah. Take and it does take talent to play that game. Like, yeah. It ta- Matt and I did the global the, test. The thing as well is, yeah. Was like, oh my god! Like we were it's... getting our ass kicked at one stage, and then we finally managed to get <laughs> <laughs> somewhat decent at it. But it was, you know, yeah. so it's one of those games that reaches a a broader demographic, even though it's, it's a Nintendo bit more hardcore than Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah the, the thing as well is like, yeah, they've got the competitive element of Splatoon too, but then. The thing is, when they make a competitive game, it never takes away from the fun of the game. Yeah, that's what I found in Nintendo stuff. Because it's like you, the second you say it, that's that's what I was talking about before the entire fridge thing, which you never bring bring up ever again, please. Um, well, I was saying, yeah. So my friend, he's like, oh, I play heaps of Dota and Counter Strike and stuff, and it's like, well, he's like, yeah, I stopped playing them because, like, you know, I, I only play them to, for the sake of playing. I don't play them to have fun. And it's like that's the, not the point of a video game. <laughs> like, you know, if you're gonna go and you're gonna play a video game as a chore, what's the fucking point in playing a video game? Yeah, Splatoon's one of those games where I just want the stars to just exactly. And like the thing is, it can become competitive, but you're still enjoying yourself the entire time. Which I'm not saying that like these other games like Dota and all that aren't enjoyable games to play, but yeah, the just the, the grabbing factor of it being a fun game that you can you can play in a competitive or non-competitive environment that makes it more appealing. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they bother doing a campaign for this one. I would I think that would be a good drawing point. Like it would bring more people into the Splatoon like side of things. It's like Yeah. Cuz you think about it like any other third first or third person shooter game like that. It's like hey, if you don't have a campaign, a lot of people are going to shit on it. But with Splatoon nobody really did. Yeah, I mean I was happy that it was there when it was announced, but when the game actually came out, I played it like I didn't care about the campaign yeah. at all. I finished it, and I think I hundred percent of it. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it would be better for a sequel to have a little bit meatier campaign. Yeah, that can be done co-op. Yeah, I think being able to play the campaign co-op on like online co-op with somebody yeah. or even yeah. split screen would be cool, I guess. But just the fact that it was your multiplayer and then your single player was just yeah your single player, and then even doing things like being able to set up private matches with bots would be a cool thing that I hope the sequel has. Yeah, exactly, which would, which would be really nice because then it's like, hey, you don't have to feel like you're under the stress of like having a win and all that. Well, the first one almost had it. Like, three times, I think, in the campaign, like, there were normal levels you would go through, but then you would get to a section in the campaign where you were in a multiplayer map Yeah. fighting those octoling Yeah, kids. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that basically felt like a multiplayer match with bots, but exactly, it only happened in the campaign a couple of times, and there was no like yeah, yeah. yeah. there was no there was no follow through with it. That yeah. was just it. Yeah, I which would have been cool to use that AI they set up on those it's, octolings. It's like, another thing they should just like you. They should utilize the fact that yeah, I mean like I, I'm kind of contradicting what I said before, where it was like it just, it, like they can win with just on multi- my multiplayer game, but like these these elements do draw people in to play a game more. Yeah, it's like more people like, people are more inclined to buy things if you've got the option. Like if you give people more choice, then people are more likely to buy. Well, something. the fact that in Splatoon One, if we wanted to play together, you were they did eventually make it a bit easier to join friends. But then I don't think you could set it up so that you're always on the same team. No, you did. You just randomised. Like mm-hmm. the, whereas for Splatoon, it can still be like multiplayer focus, but just give us more options. Let yeah. me be able to set up a private match. Let yeah. me go. I want to invite my friends. I want them to be on my team. Yeah. And then I can either go, I want to find players online to verse, or let's set it up for reversing bots. Yeah, yeah. Well, just uh, give us keep some uh, options. And yeah. op- to compare it to something really obvious would be something like Goldeneye, hmm. where it, where you can set up a team match or just all or not all or and make private matches, but then you can also play exactly. online. Yeah. That would be like brilliant. Destiny added it. Yes. Where yeah. eventually, like by the time they added it, I kind of stopped playing the Crucible a bit. Yeah. But like, yeah, that was perfect. Just giving up everybody Crucible options, yeah. where it was like pick your map, pick your. Yeah. Your game type, well, that, invite just your friends. To, that, 
sorry, just going back to what you're saying, like that would be another cool element they could add to Splatoon. Is like, I mean, it's a weird, but like a free for all match in Splatoon where everyone's a different color ink, and then it's just like an all on all, like cool. trying to cover the entire yeah. map. That would be one of the coolest Even things if they could. It's not a competitive thing, but it's like I can set this up if I want. Yeah, to. exactly. And then like you know, you've got because there's enough colors and stuff in the rainbow. Like, come on, I want my inks. <laughs> that would be nice. So, so just to, and Sean's gonna cringe when I bring this up, but you know, we're talking about E three things and releases and whatever else. Do you think Destiny two will come to Switch? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know if the Switch is powerful enough for them. Because, like, even Bungie dropped Destiny 1 on last-gen consoles before they even finished releasing content for Destiny Yeah, 1. they dropped yeah. it after Taken King. I so I, I don't think for, for um, the sequel they'll do that to themselves. And you got to remember, like, I mean, as, as much as so obviously I, I love the Switch, but the... Um, you know, the internal capacity from the get-go isn't very big. Whereas, like, you know, Destiny releasing DLCs and stuff for Destiny 1 on the other consoles, they had a 500 gig internal memory from the start. Like, you give something which has got 32 gig, and then they're like, hey, here's your first update, it's 40 gigs. What that You'd be like, well, fucking might as well just that was another on my fucking Switch. Destiny 1 where they were like, from this update forward, we can no longer fit the content of the game onto the hard drive for people that have the 12 gig consoles. Yeah. So disclaimer you have to go out and buy a hard drive if you want to keep playing destiny it was a big thing they had to do at one point when the dlc came out. which but is I just like that's a kick in the teeth if you ask me like yeah, but De- <laughs> destiny is the other thing with the destiny game i've noticed is that you download the update but then even if it looks like you got space on your hard drive it then goes you've got to delete a whole lot of shit and it's yeah, like that's a ps4 problem and it's like well that sucks so then you usually have to delete something you're not even using even what was available at the time so yeah it's got to be a, yeah it's definitely a glitch in the system but yeah it's a problem with every big update on the ps4 is that you need to have double the hard drive space required yeah to yeah. download an update so if you've got a 40 gig update and you've only got 60 gigs left on your hard drive you you can't do it you have to have 80 90 gigs to install a 40 gig yeah which is just Um, yeah so yeah no i I think yeah it's a shame that they can't work out something for the switch because despite its flaws that game has a wide base of people even if they did something small or something like to side of destiny that somehow can, like get connected to your account and use your character but it wasn't like the normal destiny i was thinking yesterday how cool it would be if like the switch got an exclusive like S- destiny sparrow racing game or something and it just pulled in your character from there and you could unlock things that would then go back to yeah destiny. yeah because you've got to do something where if you leave the house with your switch you don't have an internet connection yeah so yeah, you can't true. like have the normal destiny. yeah exactly. i suppose there's lots of flaws with that in there yeah. yeah i mean like and there are there are left like small elements in destiny where it's like you could take like even the ghost thing like you take your little ghost and you could just have like a little ghost thing on you it could with be it like hey you pikachu but uh yeah <laughs> dinklebot edition <laughs> dinklebot oh, edition that yeah. that recent thing was awesome yeah but they nice they thing. added like there's a bit of dialogue in i think it's is it when you replay the one one of the first missions or something yeah oh you know the, the famous quote that um Peter Dinklage said that, that, that wizard came from the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they slid that. They did the update for the Age of Triumph or whatever recently, yeah, and yeah. they put that in there. And then he like he like shakes it off and goes, "Oh, I was like I don't know what that he was." He like clears <laughs> his throat. He like says it, and it was but like, it's actually <laughs> Peter Dinklage's voice. So they've taken the like snippet of him saying that, which just shows that it's hidden in an archive somewhere. Which <laughs> and then like put it in. It was such a cool little like. That oh, that, wow, that, that cool. is nice. And like see, as much as I I wouldn't say. I, 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 I shit on Destiny so much. But, like, their following and, like, everything they've done for the game, they've done it right. Like, they haven't fucked up Destiny. Like, people are still talking about it. Some people are still playing it. Yeah, I don't play it, but I still like that game and all the hours. And it's like... Yeah, yeah. I, with, with much... I like all the little things they put in there. Like, yeah, exactly. with the cave and putting the... the... Yeah. You can tell that, like, to a degree, they do care quite a lot yeah, about Yeah, but when, them, when like you their, look at the base. big picture, like, the biggest gripe that you see on the internet is people go on about, like... All right. Oh, it's DLC. Oh, they just—they're making money. They're putting this out. Putting that. Oh, it's always—you know—they're giving you half a game. Bullshit. Like most games these days have some element of DLC. Yeah, right? I'm not, I'm and not, it keeps like... adding to that. And that—that—that that, that, even with all the DLC in that I've bought, I don't feel like I've been ripped off or anything with that game because the the, the sheer number of hours I've put into that. Like, yeah. if you break that down, it's cost nothing. 
Yeah. Like, it's cost nothing. And that's the way I look at any game. If you get the hours out of it... Yeah. I, to, to a degree, I have agreed to some extent. Like, I think up until Taken King, that's about the, the chunk of the game I think you probably should have had from the get-go. Not like I can understand that that, that that how they built it from the ground, like the, from the from the base. I did seem like it was enough, but there was just like that little tiny bit more you needed from the get go. After that, I understand every every bulk of DLC. Yeah, maybe even the first two very small DLC yeah. packs. Yeah, but they, yeah, they, 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 they could have just included that as like part of the season part or, like, like, or whatever it was. You know, like just I a simple. They kind of did. I don't think it was much. Maybe people would have been more happy if they were like, hey, the first, you know smaller piece of DLC are free and then you'll yeah. have to pay for the big expansions. But then you think about it, it's like, it is an MMO. Like, I always go back and I remember that it is an MMO that yeah. they're trying to make. And like, you think of Warcraft now, you can get the Warcraft Battle Pack for like 30 bucks. Like, when that game first came out, you get the base game for 100 bucks and then yeah, you'd be the, paying the 30 bucks every month. The PC just makes people kind of... That, and that's, I can understand that to a degree, but then first person shooters in that element like first person shooters on PC, like everyone's already like really, really good at them and stuff like that because obviously like you can get they're so fine tuned. But then the second you make that into an MMO, people are gonna be fucking like everyone like everyone who wants it on PC, they'll be happy. But then like there's already like all the big hackers claims and everything you get on every online game, yeah. especially your MMOs. And it's like the second you make that into a first person shooter, nobody's gonna want to play Crucible matches anymore. Yeah, but I mean, it's not cross-platform as far as we know, so you can yeah. just leave those people on PC exactly. and we'll be happy on console. Tomorrow. Exactly, like, and, yeah. I don't think it'll be a... It'll be interesting to see how they handle Destiny 2. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think, I think, I'm hoping they take some of the... Uh, some of the cr- constructive criticism and, and add that into the next game. Uh, but overall, great experience. Great game, you yeah. know, um, enjoyable. Um, but, yeah, I think some of the criticisms is just... just completely unwarranted so like yeah so w- when I played Destiny with you guys the first Destiny when I did play it with you guys I really enjoyed what I played with you guys and I'll, I'll, I'll never disagree with that well, I enjoyed you weren't Destiny. the only one complaining back then for all the hours I put into it I complained about yeah, it a lot exactly, exactly. like yeah. when these two were playing when Beasley and Kai were playing and I'm just like I just you can't. You can, yeah. Oh, they, 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 there was they a time and I stopped. I stopped for ages, and you guys went back to it, and then like I came back in, and you guys stopped playing. It was. It was. A, there was a while there. We were just all at different times, sort of going, "Oh, we'll go back into it," kind of thing. Yeah. But I guess the other thing is we like we played right from the, the alpha. Yeah. Like so, going to that base game, you got to experience a fair bit through the alpha and the beta and everything. So by the time you got to the base game, I suppose it was like. I've seen this. See, I think that's so another especially reason. Especially for the I, first chunk of the game. Because I wasn't part of the alpha one beta. Because I, I missed that train for some reason. I can't remember. I think I was work, just really... I yeah, I think I was super busy with work and everything at the, my, at the time. But then I ended up getting it day one. I wasn't going to buy it day one because I was like, oh, I want to wait what it's like. And then you guys like, oh, we're going to do a massive, like, you know, thing tomorrow. Like, because you guys went to the midnight launch, which I didn't. I missed again because I was working. But then, like, the night, the day that it came out, you're like, oh... We're, we're all gonna bring like consoles around at your place and like play Destiny, and I was like, well, I guess I'll pick it up because it's like I want to experience that with you guys, and I really enjoyed that. That yeah, was, was like a good that was a super set. That was awesome, and that got me hooked on that game for a couple of weeks because I was like, man, this is a really fun game. This, I'm enjoying playing this with my friends, yeah. but then yeah, I just couldn't get the right kind of enjoyment out of it buying it by myself that I got the playing with other people. The thing about any MMO is that if you don't keep up then you're way behind yeah exactly and then and yeah i mean they did it they did attempt of, to add things in and whatever but it doesn't it doesn't work unless you're actually playing it through to well not even just like keep up against randoms but keep up with the friends you're playing with yeah yeah like, the second somebody gets like four or five levels ahead of you it's pretty just it just yeah well the hard thing with destiny originally was you would hit the point where you're fully maxed out and then yeah. it was such a well, so we, we, we played didn't really realize with destiny until it got to well because like, borderlands was kind of the same with me because borderlands like, every time i went to play it everyone was just leveling up way like they everyone would be a couple yeah, of levels borderlands before the worst, but... they're absolutely shocking for it and i was like why don't i like borderlands borderlands is a really fun game to play and then when me and like because the first time i really enjoyed playing borderlands so i was playing borderlands 2 with matt and we both started new characters and we were just playing the game through yeah. and i realized that the problem is when you're playing with somebody because either every time i try to play multiplayer before that was with kai no, and because the thing with Kyle is he's just like he knows where everything is in that fucking game from the get go and he get he fucking mooches XP like a motherfucker <laughs> and then like he's like four levels ahead of me and then the game becomes ridiculously hard and I'm like well I'm not having fucking fun anymore what's the point I mean it's kind of like Diablo I think to an extent where yeah it's also not quite as fun as just everybody is like the person you're playing with is so much more powerful that they're just taking all the kills and it's like I'll just walk behind you and yeah and just like you pick up all the gold and everything <laughs> off the floor this is in yeah. so, saying that, you know, talking about the, the alpha and beta, the beta for Destiny, 
like we played we played the alpha because that was only up for what eight eight hours or something it was it was like a half it an was afternoon it. or something yeah yeah it was, was like, it wasn't short. long um but then the beta <laughs> do you remember what happened when i downloaded <laughs> downloaded the beta yeah so i was sat there i sat there right i sat there this the the cursor is a circle. It looked you. like a loading circle. Oh, right? yeah. And yeah. I it sat there and sat there. And I like, the this is before we lived. Or lived so it was like, Matt, Matt was at home, Kyle was at home. And I'm going, they're going, are you on yet? No, it's still loading. Oh, uh, they like half an hour went by. Frozen. How is that still loading? Oh, it's frozen. Oh, I'll delete it. All right, I'll download it again. Like, I, this went on for like all day. Like, thank God the beta was like two or three days. Oh, my God. Then like, and insane, because I... I Got to that point and then just sat the controller down and thought, oh, while it's loading, I'll do other things. Not yeah. thinking to move the joystick so that then I would have gone, oh, that's the cursor. Finally worked it out and, I, and then I went, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Like, I was going off and they're going, what? I'm like, you know that round circle thing? That's a cursor. These two are pissing themselves laughing at me because I've, like, wasted, like, nearly half the beta time just staring at a screen. Not with just a that, but the amount of internet usage. Like, oh, I was going to say, like, I reckon I downloaded that beta like half a dozen times. So it was like gigabytes <laughs> after like, it was, oh, just so, yeah. it was so bad. <laughs> was yeah. Not my brightest moment. I think yeah, kind of looking forward to Destiny 2. Not like, it'll be good when they actually show the game and not just yeah. do a teaser. The, the, the a teaser. problem, that I think the other problem is like, because I, I won't be getting Destiny 2 day one because like, I, I, I have faith that it can be a good game but I, I want to just now the thing is when people talk about Destiny the people who get super into Destiny they over fucking talk Destiny and the, th- the thing with that kind of MMO is the people who get really into it they don't shut the fuck up about it yeah. and like you really don't care like they sell you all these things and it's just like man like I honestly just like there's no point playing this game because you've told me every piece of lore in this game which has been released four fucking days ago and it's like I just I don't want to know about the raid you went on last month yeah, with your no, fucking six cousin I didn't quite have that in Destiny because it's a multiplayer thing and yeah. I don't know I, I enjoyed it but there was also so many times at Destiny where it's like okay cool I, I want to play with friends and then there are other times Destiny was the thing that made me wish back then you could appear offline. Yeah. Because I got so sick of that. My that's the other one that Charles was Yeah, like, that, hey, that in, play sp- Destiny? in spots that did detract from it. It did cause that. Especially when it was like you were doing. If you're just patrolling them out, not so bad. But when it was actually story based stuff and they just dropped in randomly here and there. Or and if it was just an afternoon where I just didn't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. And yeah. it'd be like, I kind of want to play Destiny and just kind of Zelda I just want to go to a planet and I just want to explore and I just yeah. want to collect stuff and grind stuff and I don't want to talk to anyone I've probably got a podcast going on a second screen and as soon as I put a headset on I've got to stop that yeah, yeah. It's just like I didn't always want to play with people and I probably would have played Destiny a bit more than I actually did if I could have just appeared offline yeah which now you can do so yeah I, I do agree I think that's why so t- quickly going on to another like I wouldn't say MMO but another game similar to that was like The Division the Division was one of those ones where I was I was kind of worried about it in the same sense of the, of the Destiny, except for being like a third-person shooter and a different theme and everything, yeah. where that was by that time the appear offline was an available option. So like that, that 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 I think that's why I enjoyed the Division more than I enjoyed Destiny, which in senses like it pretty much had the exact same kind of problems which from like the general public that Destiny had. Yeah. Like people were like, oh, it's not enough content day one. And I was like, well, I'm enjoying it. Like you know, I get to sit down, I get to play it. And nobody's going to annoy me unless I choose a friend and they're like, hey, let's play the Division together. I'm like, hey, let's play the Division together. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, the fact that there was nothing wrong with Destiny outside of content, mm. I guess, for some people, that was their only problem. I don't think that's a good enough excuse to not want to play the game because yeah. the fact is the game played well. Oh, it played brilliant. Like, yeah. It is one of the best first-person shooters that can like Call of Duty as far as like actual mechanics. Uh, I can happily agree with oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think Destiny 2 is going to be fine. I'm going to pick it up. It was one of the few shooters I was actually good at. Day one, no matter (laughs) what. Whether I pick it up day one and I get sucked into it or not, I don't know. Mm. But I know that I'm not going to pick it up day one and it's going to be a bad game. That's just not going to happen. No. Bungie have a proven track record of 20 plus years, however long it is. Yeah, and 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 they've all been good. Even even, even with a game with the, the odd flaw however it's perceived by people that their games their flaws don't outweigh it being a good game like it's a good game yeah and and as you said bungie's got a good rec- record on that stuff so you know just the amount of hours i've put into it yeah i don't know if i'll get sucked into it but i know it's gonna be good like that's why i don't want to play titanfall 2 
Like, yeah. I'm sure it's a good game, but I put so many hours into Titanfall 1, it's like I kind of feel like of. Yeah. So it would depend on how much, you know, I get sucked into Destiny 2 or how much they kind of change or add yeah. to it. And if the story ends up being something really cool, which is not something I cared about in Destiny 1, but no, that's we'll see how it goes. But. Understandable, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll I, th- I think I think E3 is I'm, I'm hopeful for E3 uh, exactly I might yep. get more excited the closer it is to it that's it say, the, the more they release for it like, I mean like I haven't even watched a trailer I mean, we've got, we've got, yet just because I haven't got around to it if it pops up I'll watch it but. Yeah. we've probably got what two two podcasts at least before E3 yeah um, so you know yeah no it'll be good I know um, look we'll cover E3 heaps once it's happened and I think our podcast actually lines up with that time so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm most excited for Nintendo just because all I want to do is play my Switch and there's not a huge amount for it yeah. kind of feel like I'm done with Zelda now and there's a couple of other smaller games to hit but yeah. uh, the, big, the, crazy, the so. big Nintendo ones oh, actually, I actually forgot to mention before the big ones which I was gonna like Metroid would be nice but yes Metroid I don't actually care if it's in the Federation Force like fuck everyone who doesn't like Federation that. Force yeah, it was I cool game so much. it was cool and I'm ready for a Switch one uh, just the controls well like Federation kind of felt like stuck on the 3ds like yeah. out of all the games that play so well on the 3ds federation force was the one that it wasn't too bad for me but it, if you've got a 3ds just without could the have second been, analog stick yeah it like could I, have been so much better like it just just wait put it on switch mm-hmm. and then people won't be complaining as much about this metroid game because i think it's like they had the opportunity to be like a big release well you've got a 3ds with just the one analog stick don't you yeah yeah so like having to play a first person shooter with one analog stick. that's why i was like oh i'll play my 64 if i want to control a first person shooter really terribly <laughs> that's <laughs> do you say gold and i oh, i'm not gonna go down that road <laughs> oh, did i play oh, recently i played an old first person oh i played a the first person south park game on the nintendo 64 that's oh I played god that recently. it oh, lets you pick god between the uh, golden eye controls or the Turok controls. Yeah, I ended up going with the Turok controls, even though it was weird at first. I was playing I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, but that I, game, that, I, I don't find that game handles on any. Yeah. Well, I taught myself how to play it with the Turok controls, <laughs> and then I saw you could switch it to Golden Eye. I'm like, all right, I'll switch to Golden Eye. Oh, Golden Eye sucks. I'm gonna oh, go back to Turok can't. controls. Yeah, because you no, move with the yellow D pad. Yeah, and then you look with the analog stick. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I kept like going to walk forward, and I'm just looking upwards. Or I would yeah. enemies would be running towards me, and I want to back up, and I would just find myself looking at the ground, and then the turkeys are like running at me and I'm getting <laughs> attacked. But once I worked out how to do it, I'm like, this actually controls far better than Golden Eye yeah. if you have it. So you're walking around with a pad and you're aiming with the stick. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Like yeah. so much better than Golden Eye. Yeah. It just took me like ten minutes to kind of <laughs> just just get back used to it. Yeah. But anyway, let's um, not start a topic of old 64 games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why did I even start saying that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Federation Force yeah, will be great. Force. <laughs> um, the one I want, which I know I'm not going to get because one switch exists, is WarioWare. I just want a WarioWare on my Switch. Because yeah, it's like, Warrior they've got the niche there, yeah. and there's enough little things that they can do with it. There's like, they hey, might do it one day. I feel like it's not going to come out. Like It will come out eventually, but I know it's not going to come this year. Like, it needs to be a WarioWare in the style of the GameCube, not the WarioWare that was on the the Wii U one was terrible. I think we'll smooth get moves the and yeah. so it's smooth not moves and what was the what was the Wii one? Oh, the Wii one. The Wii one wasn't too bad. The Wii U one was awful. I didn't mind the Wii U, like Wii one. I can't remember. Smooth moves. Smooth, smooth moves. Smooth moves is the Wii. Which one was the GameCube one? Um, WarioWare Inc. Okay, it was WarioWare Inc. and Smooth moves. Those were the two which I really really enjoyed. Yeah. I if they brought oh the, the Game Boy one as well. Game that Boy was that was a really good one. Too. Yeah. If they bring another one like that. To the switch, I'll be I'll be stoked. I know yeah. it's not gonna happen for a while. If it does, hell yeah, I'm gonna I'm picking it up because I love it. Um, so yeah, WarioWare, Me- Metroid, what are the other big IPs? Oh, Kirby's obviously gonna happen eventually. Yeah, Kirby, Yoshi, right, right. Yoshi, Yoshi, Yoshi. There'll be another Yoshi song. We'll they, they, I, they I anticipate Mario game. Maker at some stage will come to it. I I couldn't care less. No, I don't I mean, care. I, I, I enjoyed just, I Mario, just, Mario Maker. I enjoyed making Mario. I think levels. we'll get a lot of Switch game, a lot of Wii U games on the Switch. Yeah. So I think we'll get a Smash Bros. Deluxe and a new Mario Maker in the same way that Little Big Planet's just kind of like. Yeah. On on every PlayStation yeah. console, it's just their creation platform. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be cool to get. I'm assuming we'll get an actual new Mario Kart. At mm. some point, years down the track for the Switch, it'll happen. That will yeah. probably be the one where they go all in on. We're gonna add characters that aren't Mario because we have no more Mario characters to put in these games. Which so. I, I think I think that's that's it will either go. So my 
predictions for Mario Kart. We either go, it'll go like you said, Mario Kart, but with extra heaps of extra characters from other RPGs. Basically, it'll be that, or it'll be Mario and Sonic Kart, which I really hope doesn't happen because that'll think, kill me. I don't think that'll happen. I think but, their partnership yeah, is but, purely for the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. but they're they're already like teasing it being an all Nintendo IP thing anyway with having, you know, Animal that, Crossing that, well, and Zelda, the other one. So Splatoon. A lot of the artwork for Mario Kart Deluxe at the moment, like, I saw a Facebook page, like, change their banner and the official artwork for that was Link, Squid Girl, and Isabel from Animal Crossing. Didn't yeah. even have Mario or any actual <laughs> yeah. like Mario characters in the picture. I'm like they're clearly like trying to. They're push trying them. to push the fact that they've got other IPs and they can use them in this car. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, that was the other thing I was actually going to say just before we wrap everything up was saying about like the Olympics and stuff like that. Well, obviously the Olympics, the next Olympics is Japan, and one of the mascots is Mario. Yeah. And Nintendo are fully endorsing that. I don't know what that could lead. That could be, we could start seeing something down that road for like through E3 this year and over the next couple of years well, they've made so many Olympic games and they've all turned out pretty well so exactly and sure considering yeah like how closely Mario is following that like with them endorsing it and the fact they brought out Olympic games who knows could be something big yeah I hope so but they could yeah. So if we don't get a sports superstars we'll at the very least get Olympics games oh I want a so. fucking sports superstars <laughs> yeah. I mean if they are doing it it'll take a while to add like yeah. local yeah. multiplayer like split screen stuff but yeah but you know what cool. that'll be fun yeah. that'll be oh, we'll on that note uh, that ends episode 7 yeah. of the yeah, podcast we're sorry you had to like suffer the train wreck of the beginning um, look, they got an yeah. interesting description of Matt feeding a cat I think that's the best thing ever uh, it could have been much better <laughs> oh, anyway so um, yeah you know the usual like, like yeah. all that um, there is a slight change you go to the end at the end of the video you can hit the subscribe button now yes because I've uh, done that that's business got shit together yeah. um, so yeah, like us on Facebook follow us on Twitter at the end of the video like, watch our like Resident Evil play gameplays yeah so there'll be a couple of videos <laughs> at the end that you can click on the links and you know watch something else um, I don't know what those links are going to be but there'll be something <laughs> it's going to be a, it's going to be potluck I th- uh, actually it probably will be one of the Resident Evils well, there you go I think maybe I don't know Excellent. Surprise! <laughs> we'll uh, see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, exciting. Farewell. <laughs>